historians, academicians, politicians who were affected by the household of the Prophet. They weren't of the religion of Islam, but the principles of the household affected them. Let's start, for example, with someone, let's start with the political world. Many times Gandhi is quoted for his reverence of Imam al Hussein. But the first person Gandhi revered was the Prophet himself, then Imam al Hussein. Unfortunately, on many occasions, when you hear Gandhi's reverence, you only hear that Gandhi revered Imam al Hussein. Go back to Gandhi's biography. Gandhi himself has a line where he says, Many people say to me that Muhammad spread his religion by the sword. With this, I disagree. It was his simplicity, his pledges, and how he would keep them, his devotion to his family and his friends that allowed Muhammad's religion to spread so far and wide. Then he said, listen to these lines, when I finished the second volume on the biography of the Prophet, and I realized the book was only made up of two volumes, I felt a sadness like I never felt in my life before. Imagine. But what's Gandhi saying here? Did he say that the Prophet is a great prophet because of Salah, because of Psalm? No, no, look at the principles he's looking at. Pledges, and he kept them. He didn't let his people down when he made an oath with them. He didn't stab his people in the back. He wasn't treacherous with his people. Simplicity. He talked with the poorest man like Bilal, and he'd speak with the richest of his community like Mus'ab. Then devotion to family and friends. Did he ever seek to allow his friends to be let down? On the contrary, even when his friends were rude to him, you found Muhammad's heart was merciful back to them. Even when friends called him words which we don't want to bring, you'd still find him saying, Oh Allah, forgive them for what they have said. Gandhi says, that to me is the Prophet. Don't tell me anything else. Tell me Muhammad's simplicity, I'll say to you, that's the religion I want to follow. Tell me his keeping of pledges, I want to follow that. Tell me devotion to family and friends, that's what I want to follow. Then he moves on to Imam Hussein. what does he say? He says with Imam Hussein, I learned how to achieve victory while being oppressed through the lesson of Imam Hussein. Notice that Gandhi says, my first salt march, I took 72 people with me. Shall I tell you something, brothers and sisters? Do you know Obama was affected by Gandhi and John Lennon's music was affected by Gandhi? And do you know that there are others like Luther King who were affected by Gandhi? And do you know that the UN General Assembly on October the 2nd says a non-violence day in honor of Gandhi? I tell you, if Obama learned from Gandhi and Luther King learned from Gandhi and you find Mandela learned from Gandhi, I ask you, who did Gandhi learn from? That's the point. The problem is when the Muslims speak of Gandhi, they don't relate the people to tell them, come back, come back, let me tell you who Gandhi learned from. Gandhi says, I learned how to achieve victory while being oppressed through Imam Hussein. Then he took it a step further. He said, people tell me that it was the sword of the believers that saved Islam. He said, no, the progress of the religion of Islam was because of the stance of Imam Hussein on the 10th of Muharram. The stance. Which stance? In joining the good and forbidding the evil isn't a Muslim stance, it's not a Christian stance, it's not a Jewish stance, it's not a Sikh stance, it's a humanitarian stance.